Welcome back. Today's episode is kind of following on something that we touched on very, very briefly, I think last week or the week before, this idea of enjoying God's best. So the context, um, I I can't remember actually how it came up in conversation in the episode, but um, I was enjoying my peanut butter on toast. And as I know how it came up, I I don't remember why I shared this part of the story, but I remember the context. Um, And so I've always been a curvy girl. And uh, one of the things that God's been challenging me on is actually just to enjoy the food with him. And then when I'm full, to stop eating. And that's actually, maybe maybe this whole being healthy thing hasn't got to be any more complicated than that. I'm like, okay. So I said to Holy Spirit, right, all right, I'm game for this. You know, we, it, I've got the quote that's here. Um, you can only have all of the Holy Spirit if you're willing to let Holy Spirit have all of you. That's where the context was from that episode. And so I was going to, I was, I, I, I am. I was going to, and I am applying that to every aspect of life while I'm, you know, trying to, God helping me. Um, and, and so the context was the peanut butter on toast. So I love peanut butter on toast. I have it with my coffee most mornings for breakfast. So I was enjoying this piece of peanut butter on toast and then I got full and this sort of nudge was, okay, you can stop eating that now. You've had enough. And I was like, oh, but look, this piece is left on the plate is my favorite bit. And you know, when you make toast and um, I have a bit of a, a penchant for, for nice bread, you know, so like, I like, um, sourdough or ciabatta or stuff with bits of seeds in and when you do it like the top half is usually my favorite because it has more seeds and I'd left that and saved the best till last and the reminder the, the thought that popped in my head was well stop saving the best till last enjoy the best savor the best and and God's best for you is really wonderful and I remember commenting at the time when I shared a little bit of that story with you okay this is probably fodder for a future episode note to self. Well, anyway, when I was sitting with God earlier in the week and said, right, how, what podcast stuff are we doing this week? This this came up as a reminder. Uh, and so I'm sharing it today um, because it doesn't specifically tie in with anything else that we're talking about. Um, but it's a, it's a reminder that is probably beneficial for lots of the time. And it also comes with a little bit of, um, a bit of homework at the end as well. I'm looking at my notes um, written down here. Um, because you know, we in in the in the human world, and I, I want to say normal life. I don't mean that at all. What do I mean by that? Hmm. Like regular day to day, non Christian circles. Then just regular people going about doing their thing. We quite often we hear stories of people, um, in older people who've died, and then when their relatives clear out the wardrobes, they find dresses that have never been worn, or bottles and bottles of the, a lady's favourite perfume that she's been saving for best. And there's those encouragements that we should stop saving things for best and just enjoy them. Um, and it reminded me that that came up as a reminder in my head with the peanut butter on toast, and that you don't actually need to be saving things were best or for a special occasion but god god gifts you these wonderful things if you if every good thing that comes into your life is a gift from god and we're told that in the bible even those little things like i'm looking at the shelf i can see my favorite bottle of perfume over there um fresh flowers whatever those little wonderful special moments are in your day that maybe sometimes you're you can be guilty of saving for best the reminder that i got <clears throat> through a piece of peanut butter on toast because apparently God can use anything and everything. <laughs> the reminder I got was actually God wants you to stop saving things for best and just actually enjoy every good gift that you are given. Enjoy every single moment. And the question then is, what is God's best in the context um, of your life? Like, what does God's best look like for you today? And this is going to be, a looking at the time, this is going to be a shorter than usual episode, but it does give you a moment to actually sit with Holy Spirit and ask him, if you're not sure what God's best looks like for you today, you know, and, and there are a number of different examples I could give you. So it could be, OK, what is what is what does God's best look like for me as I step into a brand new day? Are there certain routines and, and habits and, and things that you step through that when you do those things, they they help encourage you and lift you and help you have a good day? Similarly, maybe it's in the realm of self-care. What are those things that God has gifted you with, those things that actually make life feel more lovely and more delightful? So like I say, if you're not sure, sit, ask Holy Spirit to bring those things to mind. And then the actual homework is 
I want you to ask God what the next step is as a result of that new awareness. So if you've, once you've identified what God's best looks like for you within the context of your life, you say, okay, God, what do I do with this? Now, my experience of this, and this is shared with you before, for me, it's about writing. So I'll sit and I'll ask a question. I quite often in my notebook, the questions that's me asking a question, I'll then write it and I'll underline it. And then I sit and I write then what comes up to mind. You know, other people have different ways of of having that conversation with God. Sometimes it's just an awareness, like a feeling. You know, that I've talked already in previous episodes, in fact, yesterday, yesterday's episode, about that, that feeling of God's love, of senses and reminders. Whatever that looks like for you, however you personally hear from God, step tap into that, step into that space. Um, and again, if you're not sure, I would encourage you just to ask questions and what and then what thoughts come to mind and write it down. And we should we were told that we should always test the spirit. So I'm not saying that like something comes to mind and you immediately leap on it. You know, if there's something that's relatively big. So for example, I gave you having spent a number of years going, okay, God, this is my idea. If you think I should do it, do X, Y, and Z, and then leaping. Like that, I never used to give enough space in the day for God really to have any kind of input on that. So before I signed up for the um, uh, the Igniters program that I started back in April, I said, okay, God, I feel like you're saying that I should be doing this, but I need a sign. And so I, and I actually waited and I, and I said like fire or something. And I then had a number of different examples. No, the house didn't go on fire. When I tell this story to some people, they're like, oh, it's a bit risky asking for fire. <laughs> no, I didn't set the house on fire or the kitchen or anything. I thought, I tell you what actually did happen. After saying that to God in the morning, that evening when I went to go and do stories with my youngest, opened the book and the very first paragraph had fire in it. And then there was something else. And then there was something else. And so it, was, it felt like confirmation and then further confirmation. So sometimes when those things come to mind and you're like, oh, OK, I think this is you, God. Ask him. God doesn't want you to be confused. Yes, we do read in the Bible that sometimes God will close people's minds and that sometimes God makes the picture unclear. But that usually is to people who aren't loving him, aren't wanting to, to do life with him. Generally, the, the pattern in the Bible of people like you who have God's heart, who want to do life seeking first the kingdom the pattern is not one of confusion you know it's a it, we don't tend to get the blueprints like Noah for example we're not likely to get a massive great big document that tells you how to build the temple uh, like Solomon did and those specific instructions that they had for the tabernacle we don't get that because we have Holy Spirit and it's about relationship and so the more that you can get into that practice of going okay God what do you say about this hearing what comes to mind. Okay, God, I think I hear you telling me this. Is that right? That conversation, it's about relationship. That ultimately, I believe, and I would encourage you to you know, explore this as a possibility, is actually the reason why we don't get those big, you know, massive downloads most of the time, is that God loves you. He wants to be in relationship with you. And so the more that you can be in that conversation with him, the more delightful that is. You know, that's why I actually used to get frustrated that we didn't get like really clear concrete plans now I'm like okay God thank you because it means that we then actually stay in touch with him and stay in step with him and it gives him a chance to like tweak and adjust if we sometimes don't quite hear right but God doesn't want you to be confused so like I say taking you back to your homework um, and it's a play thing it's not meant to be stressful as a result of discovering what God's best looks like within the context of your life ask God what are I meant to do with this and then come and share what comes up. So what I've started doing in the last couple of episodes, um, you're probably watching this in the playground because I'm, I'm popping them the video version directly in the playground. So if you are watching this in the playground, yay, you can actually comment underneath that post or start your own post, whatever you like. Housekeeping note, if you're following along and you're not in the Itchy Soul playground, itchysoul.co, where you can find out more and join us. Because as you will have gathered when I record these episodes, I'm really talking to members of the playground and you're going to have a whole lot more fun from this if you come and join us. Anyway, thank you for, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to share this with you. I'm really excited to hear more about what God's best looks like for you. So do, once you've, once you've had a chance to think about it and, and play with that, share what comes up and, uh, and I'll do the same as well. You know, this is about doing this thing together. In the meantime, thank you and I shall catch up with you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.